Hi there, welcome back. In this video, we are going to start a new series talking about the binary search tree data structure. We're going to look at the theory behind how it works and define some algorithms for interfacing with this data structure. And we're also going to do some analysis on its performance. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so in this series, we're going to go through a brief introduction of the binary search tree, what makes it unique and different from other binary trees, and what advantages that the binary search tree gives us. Okay, what are some of the pros and cons? And then we're going to look at the ways that you can perform traversal within this particular structure. And there are three options you have. One is pre-order, one is in order, and another is post-order traversal. Okay, and then once we cover that, we'll go into the different interface algorithms. We'll need to have an algorithm for inserting values into our binary search tree. We'll need an algorithm for removing values from our binary search tree. We'll need an algorithm for searching for a value within our binary search tree. And we'll need an algorithm for clearing all of the memory that's used by our binary search tree. So the binary search tree is a structure that is a form of a binary tree. Now the nodes in the binary search tree are going to be organized by values called keys, right? So each node, in addition to any other information, is going to have a particular value called a key. And the structure is going to be organized according to a fundamental property that I like to call leper, right? Because you know, if you look at point three here, or fact three, you know, there's like this um, abbreviation when I write it out, it kind of looks like the word leper. And so what that means is, is that the left child node is going to have a key or is going to contain a key that's less than its parent's key. And the parent node in turn is going to have a key that is less than its right child node's key. So this organization is going to allow us to perform certain operations a lot more quickly than you would otherwise be able to perform them, say, if you were using a singularly linked list. Okay, so for our first example, we have uh, a well-formed binary search tree. So here you can see that I have seven nodes, okay, and you'll notice that each one of these boxes is going to represent a single node, and we've got a value in each one of these nodes, and each node has two pointers, right? So the pointers are going to point to a left child and to a right child, right? So the node that contains 10, this guy right here, 10 is the key, and this is our root node because there's a pointer, which we call root, that has its memory address that's pointing to it. The root node has two children. Its left child is the node that contains eight, and its right child is the node that contains 20. Now take a look at these three nodes, right? This forms a triangle of sorts, okay? And this triangle is what we're gonna focus on um, through the interface algorithms, okay? Now, for this triangle, you'll notice that it follows the fundamental property of organization that I call leper. The left child node, its key is eight, which is less than the parent node's key, which is 10, which is less than its right child's node, which is 20. Okay, now let's take a look at the node that contains eight. Its left child node has a key of five, and its right child node has a key of nine. So left is less than parent, which is less than right. Now take a look at the node that contains 20. Its left child has a key of 15. The node itself has a key of 20, and its right child has a key of 30. Okay, all these zeros at the bottom represent null, right? So all of the leaf nodes, their pointers are pointing to null. So we have ourselves a fairly balanced tree here that has the nodes spread out, and it follows this property of leper. 
Let's look at another example. Okay, in this example, we have a binary search tree that isn't as well formed as in the previous example. We can see here that this tree is quite right heavy. The root node, which contains 10, has a right subtree that has four nodes in it, while it has no left subtree at all. So how is this possible? Well, there's no guarantee that a binary search tree is going to always be well balanced, like in the previous example. The overall shape of the tree is going to depend greatly upon the order in which values are inserted. Okay, so let's go back to the previous example. So what's the whole point? Why use a binary search tree as opposed to a singularly linked list, for example? Well, what a binary search tree does or allows us to do is taken from its name, right? If we have a well-formed tree like this, okay, we can do what an what basically amounts to a binary search on the data structure. But now, because of the way this thing is structured, we can do essentially a binary search, right? So the searching algorithm boils down to this, right? What we will do is we'll start with the root node, okay? Which is this guy right here, right? So let's say that we were searching for 15. Okay, so what we'll do is, is we'll say, all right, well, um, do you contain what I'm looking for? No, okay, fine. Um, is what we're looking for bigger than the current node? Well, in this case, 15 is greater than 10, true. So then what we'll do is we'll recursively examine the right node. We'll repeat the search, but in the right subtree. What that allows us to do is cut out all of these nodes right here. So with one comparison, we've cut our search space in half. Sound familiar? That's how a binary search works. Okay. So once we've done that, once we've moved on to the right child node, then what we'll do is we'll say, well, are you 15? No. Okay. Is 15 less than what's in this current node? Well, yeah. So then that tells us to recursively search the left subtree of the node that we just examined. So when we do that, what do we do? What happens? We cut out this subtree right here, right? So we've cut out the right subtree of node 20, right? So then we will go to that next node, right? To the left child. And we'll say, well, are you 15? Well, yes, you are. Okay. Awesome. So with three comparisons, right? One, two, three, we found what we're looking for. We didn't have to search every single node. As usual, if you found this video useful, please consider hitting that thumbs up button. And of course, if you thought that it sucked, there's always that thumbs down button for you as well. That's an option. And also please consider hitting that subscribe button as well. Okay, and if you're a student of mine, have more questions, please feel free to shoot me an email or stop by my office hours. Okay. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.